<clears throat> Today is the octave day, of course, of the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And it is, as well, the Feast of St. Basil the Great. And I think the two really coincide very well together because we see exactly what all of us are called to do in relation to the Sacred Heart of our Lord. Our Lord's heart, of course, is the source of infinite love and graces which come to us, which aid us in that pathway towards salvation. And what our Lord asks for in return is simple. He asks for that reciprocation of that very divine love. Do not give of our, our own meager, uh, corruptible self, but rather to give what he has already given us by means of what he calls us primarily to. That is, that virtue of charity, the definition of course, as we all know, being the love of God above all else and the love of our neighbor as ourselves. These two things, they're not separate items, they're a united item, a united point of that true love, charity, love of God and love of neighbor. And with St. Basil the Great, we see how he does exactly this. When he was made Bishop of Caesarea after fighting against the Arians there and inspiring the people of that city to maintain strength and faith despite the overwhelming flow of heresy that was raging throughout the world, he, in his position of, as bishop, soon found himself at the pointy end of the persecution. He found himself with an emperor facing him down, wanting his either conversion to Arianism or his removal from the city so that an Arian could be raised in his place as that new bishop. And so the, the Valens, the emperor, he sends off his, one of his chief officers to deal with the bishop, to talk to him and on behalf of the emperor. The, the chief officer arrives at, uh, at, to Basil's house and he comes to him and, uh, and, and implores him. He tells him, you have, to, you have a choice to make. Either you abandon the Catholic faith and embrace the faith of the emperor, or you'll be exiled from the city and we'll replace you anyways. And with that, Basil looked at him squarely in the eyes and without hesitation told him, well, I'm never going to abandon the faith. And the man said, why? Why do you not hold, uh, wrap, wrap your mind and hold to the faith of, the, of someone so great as the emperor? And Basil's response was that it is because the Lord our God, who is infinitely more powerful than the emperor, he forbids it. And the, the officer, taken aback by the bluntness of this, he turns to St. Basil and he says to him, don't you fear what the emperor can do to you? Don't you realize that he can strip everything that you, that you have away from you, take all of your possessions, away from you in an instant. Don't you know that he can make you suffer long and hard for not embracing the Aryan faith? Don't you know that he can remove you from this country and send you far away for not embracing as he has? And Basil's response to him was still just as crystal clear and with absolute confidence he says, what power does the emperor have over me? If I possess nothing in this life, then what can he deprive me of in the way of possessions? If I were to be put to torture, my body is so weakened that at the first blows, I should die. And why would I fear death? Because the emperor would do me a favor by sending me more swiftly to God. And as for being in this place, the only true country I have is heaven, and that is the only place I desire to go. So in this life, I could be sent off here or there, and it doesn't matter. No, I will not embrace the faith of the emperor. 
And with that, the officer told him, I'll give you one day to think about it and see what your answer is tomorrow. And Basil turned around to him and said, you can ask me tomorrow, but it'll be the same as I told you today. And with that, the officer left and he went back to the emperor and related all of the things that he had said to him when he was interacting with St. Basil. And the emperor was actually impressed by such a strong man to stand so stalwart in the faith and without hesitation or wavering at all. All the while, though, he still recognized him as a problem and resolved to have him removed from the country. However, as he was putting together the, 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 the command to have St. Basil exiled, all of a sudden he found that his wife and his infant son were struck deathly ill and were in danger of dying at that moment. And the emperor, as faithless as he was, he realized in that instance that this was a punishment from God. This was God punishing him for having treated this holy man in such a way. And he realized that if his, if his son and his wife were to be saved from death, that it was only going to be from, the, from Basil invoking heaven that they could be saved. So the emperor went to Basil himself and, he, and arriving at the, at, the, at the bishop's door, he begged him, please, your excellency, Pray that my son and my wife be liberated from the illness that they have and their lives be spared. Basil did not hesitate in the least. He didn't hold the, the, uh, the, the threat of exile against the emperor. He didn't have any kind of grudge on him at all. He simply turned to him and said, I will do this only under one condition, that your son be baptized a Catholic and raised in the Catholic faith. You promised me that, and I will pray to God, and I will save your child and your wife. The emperor agreed, and Basil, dismissing the emperor, knelt down and prayed. By the time the emperor returned home, he found that indeed his son and his wife were made completely healthy all anew. And he rejoiced, but his joy was quickly overcome by his pride. And soon afterwards, he reneged on his promise and had his son baptized by an Arian bishop instead of being baptized into the Catholic faith. As soon as the water had been poured over his head, the boy fell instantly sick again and ended up dying as a result of his infidelity to God and to the promise he had made to Basil. <clears throat> In return for this loss, now the emperor again was angry, and he determined to send Basil away for good. He sat down to write out the note of, of, uh, of expulsion for it to be carried out, and he sat in the chair, and it shattered beneath him. And then, now infuriated, he got up and he grabbed the pen standing at his desk and he began to try to write, but no ink would come out of it. No matter how many times he dipped it into the well, there would, no ink would flow onto the paper. And as he pressed down on it, it snapped in half. He picked up another pen and tried again, and that pen snapped too. Then the third time as well he, was the same result. No ink would flow and the pen shattered beneath his hand. Finally, realizing he had been beaten, he left it alone and allowed the St. Basil to remain there in Caesarea. It's a great example, this, this miracle that took place between St. Basil and his interaction with the emperor of that true charity that he had in his heart. We see it first and foremost, the love of God right there as he stands firm in the faith, unwavering, unmoved by any kind of threats against him, unworried about any kind of suffering that might come his way, unwilling to even have a hesitation of a moment to think about his choices in life, knowing that the only choice that he has is to love and serve God with his whole being, and that no time or no uh, compulsion would change that in him. 
And all the while, while he was strict in his talk and direct and very forceful in telling the messenger that in no way, shape, or form would he deny the faith. At the first biddance to come and to do a favor for the man who was trying to persecute him, he had no bitterness in his heart and he had no hesitation to help. That love of God and that love of neighbor united together in that one person. And so as we celebrate this octave day of the Sacred Heart, it is not the finishing of, of our recollection on that great heart of our Lord, but rather it is a time in which we are called to realize what we must do every day of our lives, to reciprocate the divine love, to serve God by our own love and strength and confidence in his faith and to share it by means of our actions and care for the neighbors around us as well. And so, by reminding ourselves of that regularly, we'll find so many ample opportunities to practice that particular virtue each and every day of our lives if we search for it and we pay attention to it and we apply ourselves in the means of exercising it. And each one will draw us nearer to that heart of our Lord. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.